It's time for Sunday school again. It's now meeting with you. Our topic this morning is the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. But before we go into the lesson proper, I want us to pray. Father, we just want to thank you once again for the privilege given to us to learn at your feet. We ask to God that you open our mind of understanding that we may understand the scripture. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. When we're talking about the power of forgiveness, we're simply talking about the ability to forgive. But before we go into the lesson properly, we want to look at our memory verse. Our memory verse is found in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians chapter 3, Verse 13, and it reads, We're bearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Now, our Bible text is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 50, verse 17. To 20. We'll be looking at, uh, we'll be reading our Bible text as time goes on. What is power? Power simply means ability to act, ability to take an action. Then forgiveness is ability to, to intentionally decide to put aside feelings of resentment, anger, and revenge towards an, 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 an offender. So as Christians, we must be ready and also put it as our daily lifestyle to always learn to forgive our fellow brothers and sisters who offense us. And we want to look at our lesson in two aspects. And the first aspect is, is raisings. Raisings Christians should forgive. Raisings Christians should forgive. It's an obligation. It's a law. It's a prerequisite that every Christian must abide by for you to live is a truthful and sincere lifestyle of a Christian. So those reasons are these. Number one, it's a command given by our God. It's a command given by God. In Luke, in Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And also Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It's a command. And the moment you decide to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, then you must be ready to obey simple instruction. So as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must be ready to obey the commands of our master, Jesus Christ. Then the, uh, the second aspect is we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are a living example that others follow and watch. Just as an uh, adage says, we are the book that people around us read. People around us read. Your lifestyle, your doings, your action, your words. Tell them who you are and tell them whether they can emulate your lifestyle or not. 
So we must, we are light of the world. So we should learn to forgive so that others who are watching us can emulate from our lifestyle and live such life. Then the third aspect is anyone who doesn't forgive, God is always angry with such a person. And such a person can never find favor before God. So if you really want to enjoy the favor of God, the benefits of salvation, then you must be ready to forgive your fellow brother and sister who might have offended you. And also, the next aspect is lack of forgiveness in the prayers. We can find that in Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Mark 11, 25. The moment you don't forgive your fellow, then your prayers will be hindered. And the Bible also made it clear to us that if you have offended, if you have a grudge with someone else, whatever you have come to do at the altar, drop it there. Then go back to the fellow and go and settle that case before coming back to the altar to present whatever you have to do or to settle with God. So it comes for a need for you and I to forgive our fellow brothers and sisters so that our prayers will not be hindered. And the last aspect of reasons why we should forgive is we need to be forgiven. You and I need to be forgiven. When you forgive, other, one, other people too will forgive you. And to summarize everything, God himself, who is your creator, also will forgive you. So let it be our last time as Christians who is running a race and who is aiming towards heaven to forgive our fellow brethren. Now we want to look at the second aspect of our lesson, and um, which talks about, it talks about achieving true forgiveness. Achieving what you will achieve. What are the things you must do for you to really, and to really work in forgiveness? And the fourth aspect is the moment you don't forgive your fellow brother and sisters, there will likely be a, you, you will experience blood, high blood pressure, high blood pressure, anxiety, hostility, depression will be the life experience of such a fellow who has caged his heart or closed his heart towards forgiving his fellow brother and sister. So we should avoid such so that we will not experience, we will not, we will not, we will not, we will not, we will not take our life, I mean, kill our life, I mean, I mean, cut short our life on time. So there are other aspects I want you to, to take note of. There's a word called reach, R-E-A-C-H. And we want to look at what R stands for, what E stands for, in order to achieve a true life of forgiveness. Number one is recall. Recall the scenario. What led to misunderstanding? What, what prompted the argument? Then when you, when you see what prompted it, then try humbly Try to see where you have wrong and acknowledge one another's faults, then learn to forgive each other. Then the other aspect is being, being the E part emphasized to emphasize. That means being able to see at the point at the offender point of view what he or she was trying to point out that might have warrant misunderstanding. They humbly submit yourself, oh, is that what you were pointing out? 
Is that what you were trying to tell me? That I, f that I fled up? Or is that what you were telling me? Then from there, reconcile. Apologize to each other. And take necessary action to forgive one another. And as you do this, honestly, you will enjoy a peace of mind. Your life will move forward. Favor will be, there will be connectivity to favor. And according to Genesis chapter 37, verse 8, and also 19 to 21, you'll be able to enjoy a way forward, just as Joseph did while he forgave his, his brethren. Then we want to look at a trusty gift, a trusty gift. And when we talk about a trusty gift, is ability to look at our shortcoming, as I've earlier said, because they work pari pasu. So it's our ability to check our shortcomings and then realize the need to forgive one another for whatever we have gone wrong. And when we do this, then earnestly, everyone will go back joyfully rejoicing and with peace of mind. Then the fourth aspect, which is the C part, the letter C is commit. To commit is to make public share one decision, to forgive with an accountability to the partner who has offended us. Ability to, to mention, oh, this was what you did that makes me to flood up. This was what you did that prompted my anger. And from there, everyone realize, check, check notes, whatever he or she has done, then, then you were able to put things in line and forgive one another of those things that prompted those offense, or, or, of offenses. And I pray God in his infinite mercy in this season of heaven on earth, the Lord will help us to live a correct lifestyle of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. The last aspect of that word rich is old. Old simply means the, the final stage of, of this model, the offender must be determined to see, to eat that his decisions to forgive is realized. You call the person and you call him, oh, I know the way I spoke with you, to, you, to you the other time was, was wrong. Please forgive me. Call the person, let him or her realize they need to forgive one another so that things can move on. Possibly we are in the same office. The moment you have grudge between one another, what you are meant to do and something you are meant to carry out in that office will not be done well. So you need to forgive one another. I want to and state a scenario of I going to a petrol station to get a fuel. And as a result of that, that, that means there was queue and waiting to get my own fuel, I mean, fuel into my gallon. And the, the, other, the other person standing by my side, you know, mentioned statements that weren't one just rebooking. And he fled, he, he fled it up. He, he was, he, his anger, you know, he just get angry. And I had to call him that, no, 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 you shouldn't know that. You said, you were the one that said that statement. And you know it's wrong. And from there we call to one another. I made him realize what he said. And also realize what I, what the way I reacted to. And we said to it amicably, that is the life of a Christian. And when you do that, the souls that are looking at you, are looking outside, the souls outside there will be able to checkmate your life and be able to look to the pattern of Christ's image in you and follow suit. I pray God Almighty we help us to represent him well in our day-to-day -day activities and in this race of faith so that at the, at the end of everything, we can be welcomed back home joyfully. I pray God Almighty we help us in Jesus' name. Quickly, let's read the text before we round off the lesson for today. And it says, 
So, so shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive and pray thee now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they, they, they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, Forgive their trespasses, the trespasses of the servant of God, of the, sub, of the father. And Joseph wept, and when they spoke unto him, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servant. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I, for am I, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. So, brethren, God has placed you where you are to be able to save souls. God has placed you there to be a representative of Him in your action, in your deeds, in your reactions. So, please always checkmate yourself so that you can live the true life of Christ. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for this, for your word. That's, this very hour, we pray, O oh God, that day by day you will help us to live a true lifestyle of, a, of Christ in our day-to-day -day work, working with you in Jesus' name. Help us to represent you well. And at the end, help us to make it to heaven in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you, and have a lovely day.
Oh, my God. 
Let somebody shout hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for another Sunday. 
we thank God for making us to be among the living that are alive in him again today. It's another time to feast on his table. I want us to begin to thank God for being alive this morning or this afternoon, whatever time it is in your zone. Let's just bless the name of the Lord for this day. It's a good thing that we are alive in God. Let's glorify him. Let's thank him. Let's appreciate him for his goodness towards us, for his mercies that endures over our lives. Because the word of God tells us in that book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, that it is the mercy of the Lord that has kept us alive. It is by his mercy that we are not consumed. And his compassion is ever speaking for us. His faithfulness stands for us. Let's thank him. Let's bless his holy name that we are alive today. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. It's only the living that can praise you. And that's why we're saying thank you for making us to be alive in you this day. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I want us to commit today into the hands of the Lord that the word that we are going to hear today will bless us again. I want us to tell God that our lives will be impacted again today, that the word will reach at us, that the word of God that we are going to feed on today will fill us unto satisfaction in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the word from the beginning. We have come to feast on your table again this day. Please, Lord, let your word do us good. Let your word transform us. Let your word, O oh God, impact us positively again today, O oh God. We don't want to dine on your table in vain. We don't want this word, O oh God, to come to us in vain. Please, Lord. That the time that we will finish today, we want to have been blessed tremendously by the power of the word. Please let this be so in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And I want us to commit our Father in the Lord, our Daddy that the Lord has been using to break the bread of life into the hands of the Lord. That the Most High God will influence him mightily today by the power of the Holy Spirit that the unction to function will rest upon him greatly today under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that he will break the bread according to the power of God, according to the mind of God for us. And that word, as the word comes out with power and with anointing, will transform lives, will save souls, will heal the sick, will deliver the oppressed. Shall we pray in the mighty name of Jesus? Maseke linda masunturia. Rebosh masaka linda makuri masuntoli gaya masunturia. Father eternal, we pray. Committing our Father in the Lord into your hands today, O God. Without you, there is nothing that he can do. But Lord, we know that you are, you, are the, uh, you are on the inside of him. And we ask, O God, that by the power of the Holy Ghost today, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you will send your word through him again to us. Oh, yes, Lord, you will touch our lives. You will break asunder everything that is not of you, that is contrary to your will for our lives, O oh God. Even by the power of the word that will come from him today, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that Baba, all his efforts over us will be yielding multiple results positive results as you'll be saving souls you'll be healing you'll be delivering oh lord let this be so in jesus name more of your enablement for him we ask oh god yea lord more of your strength more fresh anointing we ask for him this day thank you for doing it in jesus mighty name we have prayed our father in heaven we want to thank you we thank you for this privilege of listening to your word on weekly basis from your son, our father, Daddy Ia Deboye. Thank you, almighty God, for the unction that you release upon him every Sunday to dish out this word of life unto us, to break this bread of life with us. Ah, Daddy, we are not taking it for granted at all. We say thank you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Again, we have come today, almighty God, to eat on your table, to, for us to eat the bread of life. Father, we pray. That the word will come out powerfully, O oh Lord, under the influence of your Holy Spirit and touch our lives and transform our lives, O oh Lord, and 
impact us that we will live in obedience according to your word and that Lord at the end of everything here in this world when we stand before the throne of grace we will not stand condemned by the word that we are hearing today and that we have been hearing and that we will still be hearing in the name of Jesus thank you blessed Lord for our daddy please Lord as you are using him for us we pray that Lord, you will hope, hold him by the hand to the very end. According to your word in that book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, you said you will hold us with the right hand of your righteousness. Lord, let this be the portion of our Father, O God. Thank you, Abba Father. Glory be to your holy name. Forever I will continue to praise you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. We are grateful to God once again for the opportunity to gather where, wherever we are gathering from. And um, those of you who are in church, those of you who are in your house, or maybe you are somewhere where you want to hear this word. It's my prayer that the word of God will continually bring profits to your life and to my life in the name of Jesus. And we appreciate God for a dear father that the ERW, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian church of God, who has released himself to God to become a blessing, generator and a blessing distributor to this, to this um generation we live in. The Lord Almighty will continually strengthen you, sir. The mighty King of glory will give you multiple dimension of anointing more and more in Jesus' name. Today is another time of the feast around the word of God. And I want to read a scripture that the word himself said because in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 the Bible said in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God himself. And the Bible said he is with God at the beginning. So in John chapter 1 verse 14, John 1 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, glory as the only begotten son from the father, full of grace and truth. This is what he said in John chapter 6 verse 63. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You are about to partake of spirit. You are about to partake life. Please get set to. As our daddy in the Lord is bringing words into wherever you are. And now we call on Pastor Kule Ajayi to bring a dear father, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, that he had to the podium. God bless you as we listen to the word of God.
praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen. I will praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Praise Him, praise Him, King of glory, praise Him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen. King of glory, we will worship you. Because of your mercy, it is of your mercy that we are not consumed. Thank you that that mercy is renewed every day. That's why we are here again, Lord God Almighty, to study at your feet. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the mercy that sought us out and brought us to salvation. We are very grateful, Lord. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today, as we gather together again at your feet, please, because of your mercy, send your word to us. And even as it is written, whenever you send your word, you will bring healings and deliverance. Bring healings to us today. Bring deliverance to us today. And just answer all our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, shake hands with one or two people and say, God bless you mightily. God bless you mightily. And then you may please be seated. We now come to part 56 in our series, the one for whom the heavens opened. As you know, all these weeks we have been studying uh, the life of Joshua, using him as an example of someone for whom the heavens opened. We will continue from where we left off last time, which was uh, looking at Joshua chapter 18, from verse 1 to 3. Joshua 18, from verse 1 to 3. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh, and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers had given you? The last time we were discussing this, we discussed the issue of time, how crucial time is, and how we must never waste time again. Today, we want to talk about the last bit of that passage, possess the land, possess your possession. Yes, the Lord God of your father had already given you the land, but you must 
possess it. The kind of faith that puts all responsibilities on God and none on you as an individual is an irresponsible faith. Oh, there's no doubt about it that when Jesus Christ said on the cross, it is finished, we have the complete work of Christ. He has completed everything that God is going to do for your salvation, for your healing, for your deliverance. Everything's already done. By his stripes, you were healed. By the blood he shed, your salvation is already secured. With the same blood, your victory over Satan is guaranteed because the Bible said they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Everything that needed to be done, including your sanctification. Because when he said it is finished, he said, now you can have a heart of flesh. The sunny heart in you can be taken away and now there's a heart available, a heart of flesh, the heart of God himself. Grace is free. It's by grace you are saved. Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 8 to 9. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. But you need to obtain it by faith. By grace you are saved by f- true faith, you must believe God for it. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3.16. But then he added that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Some people will want you to believe that because Jesus died for the world, the whole world will go to heaven, whether they received Jesus Christ or not. You will be amazed to know that there are people who preach that everybody will go to heaven It doesn't matter whether or not they get born again. That cannot be true. You'll be amazed at people who say that once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's nothing more for you to do. Hmm. All you need to do is ask them some simple questions. Thank God for the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us. When he died on the cross, according to these people, we can say there's no need for fasting anymore because he had fasted for us. But apostle of grace himself Paul said, I fasted often. Why is the apostle of faith, of of, of grace, fast? We need to wake up and possess our possessions. God is not Father Christmas. Even if Father Christmas gives you a parcel, he expects you to open it. You still have a part to play. 
Psalm 23 verse 5. Psalm 23 verse 5 says, Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God can prepare a table before you. He will not come down and put the food in your mouth. You still have a responsibility to eat. Psalm 23, verse 5. Exodus 14, from verse 21 to 28. Exodus 14, 21 to 28. God opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel. But he did not carry them through. They had to go through the Red Sea on dry ground, and they did it in haste. He can open a door for you. He expects you to walk through the door. He opened the Red Sea and said, he told Moses, tell the children of Israel to go forward. Some of them could have said, hey, what are you asking us to do? Look at water like a mountain on the right, water like a mountain on the left. You want me to walk through this? I'm not going. God can do more than that. He will open the door for you. He expects you to walk through it. In 1 Samuel 17, from verse 34 to 51, 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 51, you will notice that the Bible said David killed Goliath with a stone. I've told you before that it is God who guided that stone to the forehead of Goliath. I have told you that if anybody sees something coming towards his face as a matter of reflection, as soon as you see something coming towards your face, you dodge you bend your head without thinking. Goliath saw this stone coming, but couldn't move his head because the mighty hands of God kept the head fixed and then guided the stone straight to his forehead. And the stone got in and sunk, and Goliath fell. But do you know that God still expected David after that to do something extra to take the sword of Goliath and cut off that head? The African elders have a proverb. Stay away from a snake whose head is not cut off. Why? Why? The snake may appear to you to be dead if the head is still on. What if it revives? And what if it is pretending? On several occasions when I walk through the camp at night, I have seen snakes on my way pretending to be completely dead. Initially, I didn't know the trick. When they appear completely dead, I always think, oh, maybe a lorry had crushed them. And so I continue on my journey. Only to look back some seconds later and find the snake is no longer there. So now when I see the snake pretending to be dead, I make sure the head is crushed. You must possess your possession. In John chapter 11, from verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, the Lord Jesus Christ, with his tremendous power, with the ability to raise the dead, see engage the men around. 
One to take away the stone. Ah, the one who can raise the dead has the power to tell the stone to move. But he said, these big boys around, they can do something. Let them do what they can do. First, move the stone. They did. And I pray that if there's any stone in your life that is blocking the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will show you the stone so you can move it out of the way. And then when he's now commanded Lazarus to come forth, and Lazarus came out, bound in grave clothes, Jesus Christ didn't say grave clothes, loose. He said to the people around, loose him and let him go. There is what God will do. But you must play your part. He can produce manna. But he will expect you to collect the manna. Exodus chapter 16, from verse 4 to 18. Exodus 16, 4 to 18. He rained down manna from heaven, but he told the children of Israel, collect, collect. Possess your possession. You will notice, according to Joshua chapter 5, from verse 10 to 12, Joshua 5, from verse 10 to 10, uh, 10 to 12, as soon as the children of Israel got to where they can plant, and they began to plant. The very day they began to harvest, manna seized. He will provide for you when you can provide for yourself, but he expects you to take action. <laughs> Several years ago, some students in a particular university, wonderful Christian boys and girls, were failing in their examinations. And once I heard about it, I called them together. What's happening? Why are you failing? Don't give Jesus Christ a bad name. Well, is it not written? That the Spirit will remind us of all things, of the things you have learned. Examination is around the corner. And that's when you are doing night vigil, praising God, doing, and you are not studying. Well, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be able to do all things. I said, sure, He will comfort you when you fail. He will comfort you and send somebody like me to tell you, be wise, study. And thank God things changed after that. There is what God will do. There is what you have to do yourself. The Bible tells us that it is God who gives increase. But it is you who will have to do the sowing. John chapter 12, verse 24. John 12, verse 24 made it clear. When a corn of wheat is standing in your hand or in your barn, it will remain alone. It is only when it falls into the ground, when you sow it, that it will begin to germinate and begin to multiply. Oh, God is able to make whatever you are doing increase abundantly, but you have to do the sowing first. Oh, 
I'm going to do this for God. And until you do it, you cannot expect a harvest. He gives the increase. But the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Galatians 6, verse 7, he said, God is not mocked. Don't mock God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. It's whatsoever you sow that you will reap. And until you sow, you are not going to reap anything. It's the Bible that says so. I'm sure, I mean, this will be just reminding some of us, because we had this one before. I've said it that if you are a highly anointed person, and you get a particular piece of uh, property, a piece of land, and you clear it very well, and you decide to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, and every day you go to that piece of land that you have cleared, decreeing, prophesying, rise, grow, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree on this piece of land, rise, grow. 40 days and 40 nights. And you don't sow rice. The only thing that will grow will be weed. It is whatsoever you sow that you will reap. It is after you sow that the seed will then begin to germinate and then begin to produce fruits. Do you know as mighty as God is, you, will, you are the only one who will determine how much you reap? Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, it says if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Because it's what you give to him that he will multiply. When the five loaves of bread and two fishes were in the hand of that boy, you know the story of the boy who gave his lunch to Jesus Christ. As long as the lunch remained in the hand of the boy, it was five loaves and two fishes. It was after the boy surrendered this to Jesus Christ that multiplication began. God will provide solution to whatever problem you have. But you have to claim it. When you read Numbers chapter 21, from verse 4 to 9, Numbers 21, 4 to 9, the Bible tells us the story of when the children of Israel murmured in the wilderness. And God heard their murmuring and decided to let loose some fiery serpents among them. So the snake began to bite them. And the biting of the snake was like fire. And they repented and they cried to Moses, Please, we have offended God. Ask him to please forgive us and take away these serpents from us. And God said, okay, Moses, make a serpent of brass and lift it up. And tell them, anytime any snake bites you, look up at the serpent that is lifted up. All those who looked at the serpent lifted up were healed. Do you know some people still died? Solution was there, hanging on a tree. But they said, how can an ordinary bracing serpent cure me of the poison of a snake? The Bible says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus Christ is lifted up now. 
they have been lifted up on the cross thousands of years ago. All you have to do is look and leave. But if you say, I'm not looking, well, don't blame God if you die. You must possess your possession. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, God provided anointing. The Holy Spirit came and landed on the head of all the apostles. But God gave the power. He expects you to use that power. Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. Acts 3, 1 to 8. Paul, I mean, Peter and John were on their way to the temple. Then they saw a crippled man asking for arms. And Peter remembered, I've received power. And he decided to use the power. He said to the man, silver and gold are fine, no better have something now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And when he said it, the man didn't move. Because the power has descended on him. And the citadel for anointing is the head. But it is the hand that is the conductor. It was until Peter grabbed that man's hand that anointing flowed through Peter to that lame man. And his uncle bones received strength. And he got up jumping and singing and dancing. There are many of us as children of God. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We have power. But we are not using it. And he said, if we lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And some of us are not laying hands on anybody. And we claim that, well, uh, how do we know that if we lay hands on the sick, they will recover? What if we lay hands on them and they don't recover? Well, what if you lay hands on them and they do recover? Possess your possession. Use what you have. When you read Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to fifteen, Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to fifteen, Elisha asked God, asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit. You know this story. When Elijah was taken away, his mantle fell. God made sure that Elijah dropped the mantle. But it is not God who came down to pick the mantle and put it in the hand of Elisha. Elisha picked up the mantle himself. Elisha went to River Jordan by himself. Elijah rolled the mantle the way his master did by himself. Elisha smote Jordan like his master did by himself. Before he even cried to say, where is the God of Elijah, my father? God can cause the mantle to fall. It is your duty to pick it up. It's your duty to use it. On several occasions, we have anointed your handkerchiefs Some of you took the handkerchiefs and just put it in your pocket and forgot about it. And when you begin to hear of the testimonies of others who have used the same handkerchief, the kind that you got, and God has produced results, don't blame God. You didn't use your own. Possess your possession. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, God said, if you call on me, I will answer you. You know what that means? He can answer all prayers, but you have to call on him first. You can say, well, after all, he knows all my needs. He's the all-sufficient God. After all, it is written, God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory 
But if you don't ask, you won't get. Today, I'm requesting you, particularly those of you who are not yet born again, don't waste time anymore. Come to Jesus Christ. Let him save your soul. Today is the day of salvation. Don't leave it till tomorrow. And those of us who are already children of God, you have tremendous blessings in Jesus Christ. Continue to appropriate them. Continue to use all the things that God has provided for you in Jesus Christ. At least continue to cry unto him so that he can answer your prayers. I'm believing God for all of you who will call on him today that very soon I will be hearing mighty testimonies from you. And those of you who want to give your life to Jesus Christ, will you please bow your head now? Call on him for salvation. He will save you today. He's been waiting for you to call on him. Call on him now. Ask him to please have mercy on you. Save your soul. Forgive your sins. And make you a child of God. And he will do so. Pray that prayer now. Even as I join you in crying to him for your salvation. So my Father, my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. And I want to thank you especially for those who have responded to your word, who say, I won't waste time anymore. I will look unto Jesus and be saved. As they have come to you today, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life today. Let them become a part of the family of God. And from now on, whenever they call on you, please answer them by fire. Very soon, let me begin to hear mighty testimonies from all of them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ today. Please contact me as soon as possible. And look for the nearest redeemed Christian Church of God to you and tell the pastor there that you have given your life to Jesus and he will tell you what to do next. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beneficiary of God's grace, praise the Lord. Love is give and take. If you love the Lord and he has been blessing you, it is time to show him that you love him by giving him your offering. But I need to make us to realize that he is the almighty. He reserved the right to either take your offering or to reject it. Amos chapter 5 verse 21 to 23. Amos chapter 5 verse 21 to 23. I ate. I despised your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat feast, of your fat beast. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. Praise the Lord. Hmm. It is a great thing, a beautiful thing, a glorious thing, when you offer an offering to God and you receive it. That means he has received your person. He should, he should make your heart to become frightened when he decides not to take your offering. Because we can only remember the repercussion of when he rejected the offering of Cain. So, beloved, I will want you to think about what befits the Almighty, the giver of all good things, and package an offering that you are convinced in your spirit that by his mercy, 
he will accept you and accept it from you. So let's open our bags, our wallets. Those of us who want to transfer, think about it. Don't let him reject your sacrifices. And in a minute, I want us to close our eyes and ask him to first and foremost wash us with his blood. If there be any sin in your life, in my life, that can make Jehovah not to accept our offering, that the blood of Jesus will remove it. After which I want us to say, Father, bless this offering of mine and make it a source of blessing back to my life. Thank you, everlasting Redeemer. Jehovah God will thank you for opportunity given to us to come before you with our offerings to show you a token of our love for you. Lord Jesus, we have prayed that whatever we make you to reject this offering, be put under your blood in Jesus' name. Lord, please accept us and accept our offerings. And every blessing that follows giving unto you, Baba, release upon us in Jesus' name. For all of us that are giving you offering this day, I pray, my Father, we will all end up your treasurers in the name of Jesus. Abundance of God will be our portion. When our equals, our colleagues are talking of casting down, by your mercy, we'll be talking of lifting up. Thank you, ancient of days. We love you, Lord. Please, Baba, help us to love you to the very end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin to drop our offerings while we dance.
Praise the name of the Lord. Let's begin to worship the King of Kings. Let's begin to worship the Lord of Lords, the one who has preserved our life to be, uh, to, to, to be alive this Sunday and to hear what we have heard. Go ahead and worship him. Give him praise. Give him honor. Magnify his holy name. What a great God we serve and what a big revelation. Give him praise. Give him honor. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he's doing. Thank you for the one he's here to do. Worship his holy name. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. I want us to pray. We have heard it today that if you really want to, 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 to take possession of your possession, you have a responsibility. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, give me the courage, the boldness to stand up to take possession of my possession. Because of all you have done for me, because of all you have prepared for me, Lord, I need courage and need boldness that from now on, I'll stand up and begin to take, my pos take possession of my possession. In the mighty name of Jesus, I need your grace, O Lord. Give me the grace. I am ready to move. I am ready to rise. Just as you have heard today, mighty Father, release your anointing upon my life that as I move, everything on my way that shall be crushed, I am taking possession of my possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name, O Lord, for the word you have sent again to us today. Thank you, Lord Jehovah Nisi, for our Father in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and strength upon his life. Daddy, receive all glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we ask, O oh God, that courage to stand up. Lord, the boldness to arise, to begin to take possession of our possession. We receive it today in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of intimidation, Lord Almighty, we cast it out from our life in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray as we arise in the name of the Lord Jesus, everything standing on that way shall be crushed in Jesus' name. And I pray for as many as are saying amen now, that Almighty God release grace upon your life. That Lord release power upon your life. Arise and begin to take possession of your possession. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of intim intimidation, every spirit of fear, oh mighty Father, I decree that your fire consume now in the name of Jesus. I pray that this week, as you arise to move forward, as you arise to, 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 to go forth, the almighty God will go with you. And before next Sunday, you will have testimony. So shall it be in Jesus' name. We pray. We are reading might. We are reading might. United in love. Jesus is for us. We shall come.